some, so actually, there's a lot of shopping news this week. A lot of, and that's sort of what the CADcast was founded on. That principle. We usually wind up not talking. You might about have strayed game a little shopping. bit from that. Yeah, uh, but there's a lot of interesting stuff this week. Uh, first of all, which I know is going to be important to a lot of people uh, at this show, uh, Nintendo's been on the offensive again, going after websites that host ROMs, and a lot of the sites have been shutting down or just changing their focus completely uh, to avoid being sued into oblivion. So the they're of course they're legally uh, allowed to do this they own the 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 material but people are concerned that these games are really a part of history and that if you make them if you erase the get rid of the ROMs then people won't be able to play these games anymore you'd have to rely on Nintendo to put them out on their whatever closed platform they have and chances are they're not going to be putting out their entire catalog it doesn't it's just not going to happen. Um, so there's a professor, NYU has a big game development school and a professor there said, he says, I see very fre frequently students spinning their tires trying to solve problems that were already solved in 1985. And just as you would, if you were teaching painting or music or math, what you would do as a teacher, you send them to the library to study the old classics to see what they did right and wrong. And that's the only way we can make progress in the sciences, the humanities, or in the creative arts. Which is interesting because, you know, on one hand, Nintendo's got a business to protect, and on the other hand, there's not a lot of money to be made at this point from... Well, that's, that's sort of a mix. I mean, the best-selling console of last month was the NES Classic Mini. But that's, that, that's sold with all the ROMs already out right. there. That's what I'm saying. They're, the ROMs are True. still out there, and True, it's still but sold. I, I can understand why Nintendo would not want them out there if they want sure. to sell no, more I, of I these little it. mini consoles. And to, to, to this professor's point also, what are the games he's teaching? Is he teaching... Super Mario Brothers? But they it's game development. Yeah. If he, but he, I'm saying to see the old classics, if he's teaching the old classics and his club version of a classic is Super Mario Brothers and The Legend of Zelda. Well, more obscure stuff. I mean. But that's that's what it comes down to. Is it is it that he's looking to show his students the more obscure stuff? Or when he says his students need these old games as a reference, is he referring to the games that are readily available? And are there readily available classics that can fill the void of these obscure games for his teaching purposes? Basically, I'm saying this professor sounds like he's full of crap. I don't think he's so. He's sitting right there, actually. Right. Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? Of course he's quoting stuff for stuff that's not readily available, or else he wouldn't have made the quote. Yeah. I don't think he is, because what is he teaching well, look at to, novel, to learn like, the mistakes of? An obscure game that no one remembers? There's no mistakes Aladdin, to be learned. Yeah. Aladdin for Super Nintendo. That's it's, what he's teaching. Yeah. Where does he go get that? I don't know. Who needs it? Agobar. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it's, but it isn't it's something a, he would need because there's uh, there are other no, side-scrolling like, platformers like, on the Super Nintendo that he could use as an example. He doesn't need to tell his students to go out and illegally download Aladdin just because he thinks it's important for them. Well, or he's not telling them to go download it illegally. <laughs> he's saying there needs to be a way for these right. games to be preserved and easily accessible to everyone. Maybe as like an institution, you could set, like uh, the, somebody could set up like an online museum and you get access through it at your college or university or library or something like that. There's, there's an uh, dealing with those licenses though is not going to be, I mean, that's really yeah. what it comes down to, especially for something like Aladdin. Aladdin is really a license issue more than anything okay. else. This but. next item is, is sort of related, <laughs> which is why, yeah, we, we got to get off that. Um, Excuse me. It's okay. So Bethesda. They looked riveted. <laughs> you can't, you can't see anything. It's so dark. That's uh, how I know. Bethesda. Uh, recently made news by suing somebody, or rather sending a, a legal... Cease and desist letter. Cease and desist letter to somebody who is selling a copy of The Evil Within 2 on Amazon. Uh, in fact, the person was selling a sealed copy of The Evil Within 2, uh, and they marked it as a new game, and apparently that's what got Beth Bethesda's attention. And they went on, and they, so they sent this guy a letter saying, you have to remove this game. Uh, otherwise, we're going to sue you. And they even have like a process, a phone number for you to call for receiving one of these letters from their from their lawyers. So they went on record and they said, actually, the case, the problem that we have is not that you're selling used games, is that you're selling a sealed game, but you're calling it new. And we have no way to say that the game is new or you didn't just reseal it. And we want to protect buyers. So... That's what we do. We send threatening letters to people on Amazon. When keeping they, everybody safe. Keeping everybody safe. All the keep big everybody problems. I mean, they're right. not wrong. It sounds like a lot of work for... That's what I can't yeah, understand. It sounds like a lot of work on Bethesda's lawyer's part. 
Like, like, don't they have something better to do? But maybe instead of hiring that law firm to do this, hire more people to make. I'm sure it's in house counsel. No, so that's the crazy thing. So there's a law firm that's set up that they promote themselves as not getting rid of your eBay and, and Amazon resellers, basically. Right. Your non-official sellers. And you just hire these dudes and they go after the, the actual people who bought and are trying to sell your product. Pretty, pretty great. <laughs> yeah, that's huh? a real... Nobody can hear you, so <laughs> to save it for later. Save it for later. Save it for later, because you don't have a mic, and yeah. Uh, but thanks. Now we're doing a show. Uh, another, also in the news, GameStop has announced that their Power Up Elite Pro membership is being shut down. Uh, but I think this is actually it's interesting. This is all related because remember Best Buy just shut down their Gamers Club on lockdown. Oh, we a lot know. Of people, uh, are familiar with that. <laughs> But this is all, basically, these are all responses to loss prevention. Because what was happening were that people would try to game the system. And actually, now they're not just people. They're people who own small mom and pop game stores. And they would buy, they would use these great membership bonuses to buy a lot of stock for their own stores and then resell them cheaper than they could buy it for anywhere else. Um, and that's sort of what ruined it for the rest of us. Definitely with Best Buy. I mean, we had people on our website telling how they would spend like $60,000 a year at Best Buy buying games to resell in their own little indie game shop. So this is why we can't have nice things. People <laughs> people are ruining it for us. So uh, what's going to be left after games? Because is Amazon Prime going to – when does that end? Or are they they still they, uh, do that on new releases. They right? still do it on new releases. They keep scaling it back little yeah. by little. Mm -hmm. they slice a little bit of that Prime benefit. See, if you pre-order a new release, you get the 20% and that if you have Prime. But that's, I think, going to be the only thing left in a little bit, right? I don't know what's happening. Well, this is this is this uh, next question is, is sort of related from at Gaming Dad sixteen forty three. Feels like I, I feel like physical games are going the way of the CD. How soon will we see one hundred percent digital games, and will that leave the discounts on those games solely on the system provider? This comes up a lot, and the reason why it won't happen anytime soon is because not everywhere in the country has access to reliable internet to download. We're pretty all lucky those here. Digital games. Also, there's, I mean, storage at this point, both con major consoles, you could just plug and play external storage. So that's mostly resolved. It's the broadband. It's prices the, it's in the like broad, the yeah. The it's the broadband issue. It, it's, it would be too difficult for for someone living in I don't know some boondock area like Cincinnati, Ohio, to just be able to. Right, we have do, real trouble getting internet. Trouble there. getting um, internet. I don't think this is a you big just got issue. Plumbing, anymore. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't. I don't know that this broadband is that big of a it is, hurdle I anymore. I don't think it is. I think it's getting. We're getting within a decade of. of oh, within, not being I'll say within a decade. Sure. sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, he said it's, anytime. It's very soon. How soon. soon will we see? Okay, so a decade. I'm thinking right. not today. Yeah, but I think within not, a decade. Next, that's sure. Not the next series of my consoles. kids will be in college. That sounds reasonable. <laughs> but the, the consoles yeah. after that, the, yeah. yeah, it just makes sense. Hmm. Two yep. generations from now, yeah. I'll, I'm on board. I would like to see. Discounts for digital, though. Good luck. They do. They have. We yeah. have them. Eh, they do it. Sometimes. That's good. They do Better. A good job. So Better. We saw some stuff on sale. We were looking through the Xbox shop yesterday. Yeah, I bought some. I bought one of those under ten games on uh, PSN yesterday. All right. Lastly, in game shopping news, this is like the most game shopping. Yeah. Ever let's, had. let's let's get through the shopping news here. <laughs> Discord is launching its own game store uh, to compete with Steam. Uh, because so many people are using Discord now just to chat. I've their, been using Discord. With their gaming friends. They decided it makes a lot of sense. They're going to have uh, exclusives, for, like timed exclusives. And uh, yeah, Steam's going to have some competition. This is actually some will, relevant will competition. Steam really it's have? relevant. Well, they have so many users. That's the, I all was going to say, other, it all seems these like... Other platforms, they don't, have use, they don't have users. So like, you know, uh, I can't even name any third-party... Direct to drive. Um, yeah. They, it's just they don't have the users. The I mean, origin store, does. does that count? Well, you're forced to buy it. <laughs> yeah, I am. Like, 